In a memo to policymakers in April, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration said it will decide whether to change the federal status of cannabis in the first half of 2016. Currently, cannabis is listed as a Schedule I drug under the Controlled Substances Act, alongside heroin, LSD, ecstasy, peyote, and quaaludes. This means that the federal government considers the plant to be one of the most dangerous drugs, with no medical use, a high potential for abuse, and the possibility of severe psychological or physical dependence. As a result, cannabis is more strictly regulated than prescription pain relievers, which killed more than 165,000 Americans from 1999 to 2014. But at a time when about 61% of Americans say weed should be legalized, dozens of states are liberalizing their cannabis laws, and new scientific research continues to validate the plant's relative safety and medical potential. It's clear the government's classification is irrelevant and out of date. Even the American Medical Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics endorse changing cannabis' status, citing the plant's ability to treat many serious ailments, including epilepsy. So far, the DEA has rejected all calls to reschedule cannabis. However, if the agency rebuffs the change again, there is a possibility that the next president might reclassify cannabis anyway. If elected, Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders vows to end cannabis prohibition and remove the plant from the list of dangerous drugs entirely. In fact, Sanders has already introduced legislation to do so. Of course, Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton takes the more incremental approach, saying she will lower weed to Schedule II, where cocaine, meth, oxycontin, and other drugs reside. According to the Controlled Substances Act, Schedule II drugs are considered to have medical applications, but they're also said to have a high potential for abuse, potentially leading to severe dependence. Even though this modest change would be good news for states with legal medical cannabis, while also increasing pot research, it wouldn't protect states that have legalized or plan to legalize recreational cannabis.